Hey, welcome, Marcus Del Pilar. What a pleasure to have you on the Joy of Podcast. Where are you these days, Marcos? Hello, Minter, man. I'm so excited. Thank you very much for the invite. Um, really, really excited about this moment. Uh, I'm, I'm today in Orlando. I came back yesterday from Tampa. Ready to rock, babe. And um, you are a busy, busy man. You have been invested in paddle for a long time. Tell us, first of all, your route into paddle. When did you discover it and, and how did it go when you started? Well, that's a wonderful question uh, because um, I obviously come from, come from tennis. I used to be a tennis player back in the years. I don't even remember, you know, it was too many years ago. And then I became a, a tennis coach and a business owner. I used to have my, my own locations in Spain. Uh, and at some point, we were fully invested in tennis. We were very well known in tennis, building players, traveling with them in the tour. But, um, you know, I had some members coming to me saying, hey, Marcos, uh, we would love to try Padel, whatever, you know. And, you know, one day, uh, finally, um, I, I decided to build some Padel courts in one of our facilities. And, and I usually tell about this story, you know, in the first two months, I... I realized that I needed to build uh, more courts because I right. discovered, you know, the yeah, the cross-selling strategies and the business, the business model behind it, and I thought like, wow, man, this is kind of a diamond that uh, not only me, you know, but everybody should be exploring, you know, from now on. And that from then, you know, from then on, that that's been my commitment, you know, telling the world about Padel and about the potential, and just setting my love, you know, for the sport and trying to get you know more and more people involved around it. So tell us exactly when that was, when you built those first courts, and where were you doing that? That, that was in, in Madrid, in Spain. I don't remember the years. Too many years ago. <laughs> I'm too old. Minter, I'm too old. I'm becoming old. Uh, but uh, I don't even remember, like, many years ago. And uh, I need to tell you this. I'm not proud of saying this, because some people are telling me, like, oh, Marcos, you are the, uh, the godfather of Padel. Uh, at least in the US or so on. And I'm not very proud to say this, but I know this kind of podcast is kind of, uh, uh, you know, setting funny moments around Padel and so on. But at the beginning, I need to recognize that uh, I was a little bit hesitant. You know, I say like, hey, you know what? I'm a tennis player, bro. I'm, I'm not going to play this thing, you know? It's, it's like, I don't want to play, you know, in a cage. You know, this is for people that not don't know, you know, how to play tennis. But uh, anyway, you know, thanks God that I had, you know, some, some, you know, members, good friends as well that were pushing me so hard. And I made that move, you know, I decided to include two courts. And after that, the rest is history, man. It's right. what I told you in a few months, in, 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 in one month, I could say, I said like, what the hell? This <laughs> is an unbelievable, unbelievable business model. Uh, maybe because I understood it, you know, how to create these kind of cross-selling strategies once again or whatever, but I discovered something amazing. And I need to tell you that we we just double our income in the next, you know, in six months, we basically double our income, you know, in our facilities. And I can tell you that we were pretty successful with tennis. So that wasn't easy, but we double our income by adding some padel courts. So this is, you know, a legacy that I needed to to tell the world about and and to get more and more people you know connected with this because of that well that but you clearly what you the the timing that you're talking about is before paddle became so popular and today there are many sort of more traditional tennis clubs that remain hesitant to go about it thinking poo-pooing it saying well what is that kind of a noisy game in a cage so you aren't the first person and you certainly won't be the last they continue to be hesitant but fortunately as soon as you get the bug, it goes live and goes crazy. So in your in your <laughs> paddle life, you you played in the FIP. You got to a, a ranking, as I saw, of like 500 and, 550th or something like that. Congratulate, right? Or was it higher? No, I, I think that's as of now because I just played, you know, one or two tournaments last year because I I needed to become, you know, the partner of one of, of, of the players that I'm coaching, um, but uh, I'm not in competition anymore. I, I usually, you know, play every day, but uh, not on the competition level. I'm not, a, uh, I'm not a player anymore. I consider myself like a coach or a businessman. You know, I'm, I'm very connected with the business, you know, in, in Padel, and I love playing, but I'm not competing anymore. I'm not that good, man. 
Oh, well, listen, <laughs> I, I, I don't believe that for a second, and I can't wait to get a chance to play with you. So let it, just before we get into some more fun, uh, fun questions, tell us exactly what you're up to, because, I mean, between coaching coaches, the Professional Paddle League, and your consultancy in the worlds at the USPA and the USTA, you're a busy man. So give us, uh, give us what you're up to in terms of these types of positions. Well, basically, you know, everything that is related to Padel and, and very, very focused and invested, you know, on the growth of the sport in the United States. So there are, you know, kind of, you know, big foundations of things that we are doing in the U.S., which is obviously consultancy for clubs, you know, and investment groups, you know, and venture capitals that they, they want to learn, you know, or they need some help on how to land their investments in the U.S. This is taking, you know, uh, a bit of my time. Uh, on the business side, um, obviously, you know, I'm the co-founder and commissioner of the Propadel League, which is an initiative that we put together last year. It's becoming very, very successful. Um, we are, you know, super excited about the next steps that we are doing. I'll, I'll let you know later about it. Um, obviously, the third piece of something that we are doing is education for coaches. This is more connected with my with my love for the sport, the the my my goal to leave a legacy, you know, and start building the uh, army of ambassadors to spread the word out and to grow the sport and and, and to grow it, you know, with sustainability uh, in the long term. So this is something that I really love doing, to be honest with you, you know, getting into the court, you know, providing them the knowledge and, and talking them about the experience, you know, and, and how to start teaching and promoting the sport properly and how to teach, you know, on the court and so on. This is something that I, that I love. We are doing that, you know, in partnership with with Parel NBA, which is our partner for for this venture as well here in the U.S., Canada, and, and the Caribbean. And uh, yeah, I, I work with the USDA, you know, as a Padel consultant, you know, with the USPDA on this education side or whatever. But mainly, you know, is is my main focus is is properly league education and working with investment groups and and people interested in growing the sport. Uh, on on a consultancy basis. So I want to get into the PPL in a moment, but let's just focus on the coaching piece because I think this is a fundamentally important role that you're doing. And and when I when I look at clubs that are successful in paddle, it's because they have a a great coach. And for me, a great coach, as I see it, and I'd love you to comment on this, is someone not only who's got the technical abilities to understand how to teach, but also in knows how to level people, knows how to create the ambiance, and and talk about the off paddle piece almost. You know, this the okay. social piece, drinking, having a cerveza después del, <laughs> del, del juego, del partido, and and also. Uh, yeah, providing that sort of the culture of paddle, not just the technical piece. I, I couldn't agree more, Minter. I couldn't agree more. I think that, uh, you know, the technical side of the sport is important because we all need to work under the same umbrella, you know, and we need to teach properly, you know. And But something, you know, that I'm, I invest a lot of time in is is telling them, you know, about the business model behind, you know, they need to understand, you know, what the business model behind the sport and how to start attracting people, you know, and retaining players, which is probably the key uh, for uh, very successful um, facilities, uh, high generating re revenue, you know, facilities and so on. And uh, it's not only that, I think, I usually say on my conferences that we are not in the racket industry. This is kind of weird. I usually say that we are in the emotions industry. So Love it's it. all about- oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, emotions with a racket in our hands. That's what I usually say. So we don't sell services. We don't sell even messages. You know, what we sell is emotions. So we we got a, let, let's say, a big, big responsibility on creating memorable moments for people with a racket in their hands. You know, create impacting their lives somehow and, and people to, we got to look for this wow moment that I'm always looking for, you know, this wow moment where people are looking at you with, with this light in their eyes saying, man, this is amazing. You made my day, you know? And, and this is coming, you know, obviously myself, you know, coming from my passion for the sport, but also trying to apply all these marketing experiences, you know, and marketing knowledge for so many years, uh, try to apply them, you know, to the racket industry. We are on the, on the era of, of experience marketing, 
and and we gotta learn and you know how to adapt you know for for coaches to be able to develop this on the court as well so part of the part of the things that i do for for my consultancy services is to try to help facilities to design their customer journey you know how to impact people how to start attracting you know what i usually call the blue ocean people that are not connected with the racket industry which is where our big opportunity is in fact uh that's you know in the us you know is is over 330 million people uh let's say that 300 haven't been connected with any racket spot so try to imagine what the potential is if we know how to do that you know and and part of the things that we need to help you know coaches to understand is not only how to teach you know the forehand and the backhand volley and this kind of thoughts but also understanding the business model and how to navigate you know with this on the same way that you were explaining before you know retaining customers attracting customers creating this customer experience which is uh, what is boosting the feeling of belonging and where uh, facilities are putting themselves in a position where they become leaders. And when you have this, this kind of notoriety, you know, and you become the leader in the area and people follow you because of your big why, then you can, you can do basically whatever because they understand where you are coming from. They understand your passion, your big why, you know, your purpose in life, mm -hmm. and you don't sell services anymore. At that point, you start selling emotions, you know, and people follow you. And the community is growing and growing and growing very organically. So anyway, I could, sorry, sorry about that, because as you can imagine, you know, I could be talking forever. You know, I, I really love this, you know, how to get yeah. the world inspired, you know, through yeah. Padel. And and you gotta stop me because I could be talking for hours, man. I love your passion. Uh, the one thing that I, I mean, on top of everything you just said, that it strikes me is this a game that's still evolving, and therefore, even if you're good, you, you, there's there's still new shots being invented. And and for me, I'm just uh, I'm 59 years old today, as it happens in the day of recording, but. Um, I still feel I'm, no I'm, yeah, I still feel like I'm improving. I still feel like I can improve anyway, and I want to improve. And I have that sort of bug and a little hat tip to my friend Gabo uh, Loredo of Tasty Paddle. Gabo was one of my first real true paddle coaches, and he instilled in me that joy feeling. And I really, and he, so with him, I really felt that I, I, I learned a lot about that sort of the ambiance. So, Marcus, let's talk about the Pro Paddle League, because this is just such an exciting thing. You're the commissioner and co-founder. You've got now uh, seven or eight teams. There are the new ones coming. I, I don't know how many teams. There are new ones coming up. I, I know about the New York one that just signed up. There's one out in the West Coast, another one. You just had the first session, which was won by Las Vegas and the UK yeah. star, Tia Norton. Um, tell us about uh, what, what the how it's going and what are the prospects? Well, we, we successfully finished the first season, as you know, you know, 2023 season was amazing. You know, we we um, surpassed, you know, the goals that we were looking at. You know, I think that uh, we accomplished everything that we promised. You know, we put Patel on television in over 220 million households in the U.S., uh, creating a big bash, you know, helping other facilities to fill their spots, you know, providing exposure for the sport. Everything that uh, we promised that was accomplished. Um, now we sold three more teams, which are uh, the New York Atlantic plus Orlando with DY Daddy Yankee. You know, I'm so proud, you know, for for them to be involved with us, and also Houston. You know, with another good friend, you know, connected with the sport in there. And now we are um, planning to have two more teams. You know, by um, for 2024 season, it's still to be determined some details, but. Uh, the the um, the vision is to obviously grow the exposure, you know, to get more TV content, to get you know different uh, locations, and and obviously providing you know better experience not only for the players, which is uh, which they are our main asset, but also um, for the fans. So I still have this big commitment, you know, to keep growing the sport, to provide exposure for the sport, and. Uh, I think uh, there's still, you know, uh, a big room for doing things in there. I love the the PPL became, you know, the catalyst, you know, of of Padel in the US because that was part of the original, you know, thought when we were creating this. So, I I need to say thank you to my co-founder, you know, Kit Stein, uh, for supporting me in this venture, you know, from day one, 
and also the the all the stuff that we have and obviously you know the business owners you know the team owners and and all the players man it's absolutely brilliant it's, and what i like about it on top of everything is you created the new model you've got the women involved you've got the mixed uh, mixed involved and uh, the thing i have to ask marcus is how on earth did you get a tv deal uh, in the united states the first year that just seems to me like a rock and roll moment well, you know, there's a lot of work behind the scenes, man. Of I need course. to tell you, you know, probably, you know, this last year, last year and a half, um, now I'm becoming a little bit more serious. I know this is not the place because this is kind of uh, fun, you know, forever, Padel fun, but uh, also is is part of my message, you know. Last year and a half is probably, you know, one of my toughest moments, you know, in life for so many reasons, but also you know, some of the most rewarding times of my life too. So what I learned in this one year and a half is is something that I will keep with me forever. And I, I would love to encourage people to put themselves, you know, out, outside their comfort zone, you know, try to explore different things, become disruptive, you know, try to be innovative, you know, and try different things. Why not, man? A worse scenario is that something isn't working. If it doesn't work, at least you will learn uh, you will learn a lot and that's what i did you know some of the things that we are putting together are very successful some others are not but i always think that those that are not so successful are helping us out you know with the other things you know so anyway that's a lot of work behind the scenes on that um i i got an incredible team behind and uh, i don't want to get the credit of that uh, because i i truly believe in people and People are the ones uh, that are making, you know, big changes in life. So I got an incredible team behind me and uh, we all were pushing together until we we got this agreement, you know, with CBS Sport for the finals. That is over 90 million households as far as I'm concerned. We also put together, you know, an incredible deal for over uh, 120 million households with different networks like being Sport, you know, AT&T and some others, you know, the list is endless. Uh, Fox Mexico as well, uh, with the support of our Mexican team, you know, Cancun uh, waves in there and and uh, the, the incredible job that they did. And, you know, this is part of, this is, I would say that this is just the beginning, man. So everything that is coming for 2024 is even more exciting. I can I can wait to be able to to share more news. You know, we are still defining, you know, the strategic plan and so on. And hopefully we can meet, you know, in a couple of weeks or months from now again. And I'll 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 be happy to share, you know, the magical things that are, will happen in 2024. Watch this space. The the um the fact that you had some challenges, I think it's great to talk about that because in the end of the day. Uh, joy or happiness doesn't exist unless you know sadness and difficulty. And I think, you know, I think you're like just in a, in a micro level, if you're on a paddle, you're playing paddle, and then some days you go out and things aren't working. And, and that happens. And how do you fight through that? How do you adjust? How do you support your teammates, who, your partner who's not playing so well? And then you, the other point you made about the team, well, paddle is, is a game of four people. In order to make it fun, you need all four to be on the court and participating. Because if you put someone in the fridge, for example, well, that person's not going to have a lot of fun. Yeah. And so you need to be considerate. Even if he or she is a very good player, play with her, play on her, go for it, you know, and, and experience what it's like to try to return a vibora that's a vicious, you know, shot in the corner and, and, and just learn from it. Don't get upset and don't think that winning is the only thing. So joy is good. Um, one of my thought, just the other question about the PPL, you had a draft to make the first teams. Are you going to follow up with a second year draft, much like the American sports teams? Is that something you're concocting? A hundred percent. We'll be opening, you know, another application for draft, you know, in 2024 season, the draft application and the draft actually will happen in 2023. Um, we are expecting, you know, a couple of thousand players this year because last year we had over 600 players applying from all over the world, different countries, all continents. That was amazing. So this year with more teams, you know, and, and more locations and so on, we are expecting, you know, even 
you know, a higher response. So, well, I was sure. very, I, Mercus, I, I need to point out that I was very disappointed not to get drafted in the first year. I was one of the 600, <laughs> but I guess they don't have an old bad team. You know, they need, I need, I need to be hired or drafted by the old bad team. Um, Marcus, let's talk about your, your uh, paddle yourself. Cause I always like to talk about the realities of paddle at all levels. And uh, even though you qualify yourself as not a top 10 player in the world, I'll agree with that. However, you obviously are a good paddle player from your background and everything. What's your style of play? How do you describe yourself? I know you play on both sides. You're right-handed. But what sort? What animal are you when you play paddle tennis? Well, I'm, I'm a lion. I would say that kind of I'm a, a I'm a total lion, you know, not only in the paddle court, but also in life. You know, I'm a lion, you know, um, I, I love challenges. You know, I love, you know, I love competition, man. I don't think I'm very talented, to be honest with you, but I, I, I think I have, you know, some abilities to compete and to perform, you know, well. Not now, you know, but when I was a player, you know, back in the years, I had a, an ability to compete well, you know, and to be very consistent, which is also uh, one of my qualities, you know, for business, uh, being very, very consistent, you know, and working, you know, every day and and uh, being attached to the task, you know, I'm, I'm very well, uh, very well versed on that. So that is nice. Tenacious. I, I, I'm also a team builder. You know, I think it's pretty easy to play with me, you know, because, you know, I always put myself just behind the other players. So part of my mission is making my my partner, you know, be in a very successful situation as much as they can. Because this is this is maybe connected with my my coaching mentality, right? But, you know, let me address this. So the, the uh, highest level of performance of every player is in, intrinsically connected with the level of self-perception. So let's say that the, the the player, you know, can perform as high as his self-perception is. And the self-perception is connected with so many different items, you know, like, like one of the important ones is that the emotions that are running within the team, you know, the way that you uh, open the dialogue with your partner and this kind of stuff. So. Let's say that my main priority is obviously making my partner being in a very, very high flow state, you know, where he can do and perform, you know, as best as, as he can. And I'm a follower, you know, I, I don't need to be the leader. I don't have that ego. I'm a team builder. I'm happy to make my partners, you know, perform amazing and I want them to succeed because if they play well, I play well too. I don't need to be in the front line. You know, I'm, I'm happy to be the forehand guy just building, you know, the points and helping my partners to become the superstars. That's what I always did. And I'm happy in that role. I love it. And that is such a tremendous lesson for anyone playing any level is to, to think about that complicity with your partner, make them feel good if they fuck up as they do. You know, A, no problems, you know. I, I always like to say when it's like there's a, I usually play on the right as well. And if someone on the left and it's a little pop up, I say con todo. And the, and I tell the person when I say con todo, you know, go for it. The big shot. If you screw it up, that is okay. You have permission at this point to screw it up because I'm asking you to go for the big one. And and when you go for the big one, of course you yep. can screw it up. What about your uh, favorite you know shot? Oh yeah, go for it. No, this is so interesting, you know, that you are mentioning that because when I build, you know, game patterns, you know, for pro players and so on, um, there's, you know, a big piece in there that is that that we, the three of us, you know, as a team, we have an agreement. The agreement is that we are going to be looking for certain situations that are making us successful all the time, right? And we are building patterns for us to go all in. So when that opportunity comes, you know, we, we've been building so hard, you know, we've been working so hard for getting to that moment where we need to go all in. The agreement is that at that point, we got to go all in. And uh, if the, the mistake is coming, you know, at that point, you know, it's part of the agreement. Uh, obviously, you know, I think it is a matter of practice, but it's not a matter of bad decision making. So the decision, you know, is made in advance by building these game patterns. And if the execution at, at that very last moment is is bad, you know, it's a pity. You know, it's a real shame, but this is what it is. 
Yeah, you can see that I think in 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 uh, yeah. when I when I when I watch Juan LeBron and Ali Galan play when when LeBron gets upset with Galan as he uh, some you know sometimes does I'm guessing it's because he hasn't had or he hasn't executed the way we're supposed to execute at the moment and that seems to be something that pisses him off let us move on to your your um your favorite shot what is your favorite shot marcus uh, I would say the back and volley. I think back and volley and and the smash. Well, it's good to have a good backhand if you play right, right? If you're playing right, you got to have a good backhand volley. Uh, that that seems to and the smash. So the big one por tres, you can smash it out. When I when I was younger, you know, that's the only thing that I could do, you know, <laughs> because as I told you, I'm not very talented. You know, I was a, a worker. You know, like just trying to put the ball in play. You know, become very consistent, very solid, making good decisions, trying to put my player, my partner, you know, in successful situations, as I told you. And, you know, using my backhand volley to become more offensive, you know, and this mass. That was my only tool, man. I'm very limited. I'm very yeah. limited player. Well, oh, I'm sure not. But um, what about uh, the shot that you need to improve? What is the shot you'd like to work on today? All of them. I'm too bad. <laughs> <laughs> depends on the situation, depends who you're playing with, right? But uh, I can tell you that this is fun, you know, because this is very, very funny because um, when when providing these courses, you know, for people, I'm telling everybody like, hey, try to play bandejas to come back to the net, you know, and and be smart, you know, play neutral when you are not in a good position, you know, to kick the overhead and so on. And and I need to learn that lesson, you know, because <laughs> I never hit a bandeja in my life. When I used to be a player, you know, I was hitting everything that was coming, you know, that was my only tool, as I told you. So um, it's funny for me that uh, I'm telling everybody now, you know, hey, play bandejas, be smart, play neutral. And I never did. <laughs> so do as I, I, do that, as I say, do, don't do as I do, do. Exactly. If you watch me play, do, well, now it's different because I'm, I'm, I'm becoming older, you know, and obviously yeah. I need to play slower than I used to do or whatever. But when I, I used to play, you know, on the tour and so on, I, I, I had only one chance, which is, hey, I see the overhead, I go jump and hit it like, like an animal. But anyway, let's say that, um, you know, part of the biggest challenges for me is, is this kind of overheads because I never did. You know, I was I was not playing bandejas when I was playing. So I need to learn all, 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 all shots, but bandejas, you know, and, and overheads, you know, they are, you know, big challenge. And I need yeah. to improve my defense as well. I need to improve everything. And I'm, all I'm, right. I'm well, listen, you know, keep at it. That's why we play paddle, because we're always wanting to improve. How about what? who who would be your favorite pro player on the women or and men's side? Oh, uh, wow. Uh, let's say for women, you know, I have, you know, uh, an special love for Marta, Martita. Ortega. Ortega, yeah. Alejandra as well. I, I like Bea Gonzalez. You know, it's, it's hard for me to say, but I would say that Alejandra and Marta probably, you know, are... are... We're all, they're all right side players. Is That's the commonality between all... Oh, well, well uh, Bea Gonzalez is playing on the backhand side, you know, Oh, yeah, Bea, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was thinking of her partner, of course, Brea. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, I can see, you know, beautiful things in, obviously, you know, all of them, you know, and, and things for all of us to learn, you know, in all of them. On the men's side, uh, obviously, you know, this is pretty obvious. Probably everybody's telling you this, yeah, um, Agus. Man, Agus is is out of this galaxy, you know. Tapia, and, and the, yeah, Tapia. So I I really enjoy watching him playing because he's unpredictable. He's so talented, you know. He's making things easy, uh, which is opening, in my opinion. You know, these kind of players, you know, are opening, you know, a lot of a lot of um, opportunities for us because they 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 make it look so easy. You know, you see Ale Galan, good friend as well. So, and I love Ale too, man. And, and they are making it so easy that uh, you see, like, you watch that on television and you think like, hey, you know what? I can do that. You know, I can go to the court and do that today. Okay. I say, come on, go try. Go try, my boy. Exactly. It's not that easy. Yeah. And uh, he's not a pro. He's a pro, kind of a pro. But let me mention two more names in here because of my, my, my duty, you know, to the North American players. I want to mention uh, Luis Estrada, and Nico Agritelli, 
Luis and Nico are the current uh, number one team in, in the country. Uh, those are, you know, very talented players. And I would love to to say a big kudos to him, you know, for all the efforts that they are doing, you know, and, and keeping themselves, you know, engaged with the sport. They are doing great efforts. So I would include both of them, you know, as part of my favorite ones, you know, even nice. when they are not obviously at the same level than others. But um, yeah. That, Love it. Uh, I'll put I'll put their names in in the show notes, uh, Marcos. How about you know we? This is the joy of paddle, and I always uh, you know basically it's always a joy. But what is the funniest moment that comes to mind for you uh, or in and around paddle, the court of paddle on the game, whatever comes to mind? The funniest one. All of them are funny. I mean, padel is fun, you know, itself. Yeah, exactly. I could say yeah. that I'm having fun every day. That's why I, I love it so much, man. I love it, you know, as much as the very first day, like 25 years ago, or I don't even remember. But uh, let me check the funniest one. I have a funny, uh, a funny one. Uh, that I, <laughs> yeah, I, I got a funny one. That I was doing an intro, you know, for a for a don't don't ask me for details, please, because I I I don't want to provide any details, okay? But um, got you, nameless. I, I was I was doing an intro, you know, for a journalist, you know, on television live in a place in the U.S. I cannot tell you where. <laughs> uh, and I was doing that live, you know, we were live on television. I think it was CBS as well, or I don't remember the channel. I got in my in my YouTube channel or my Instagram. I don't remember. And I cannot say any more clues because people will look for that. I'll search I, for it, of course. <laughs> anyway, so I was doing that, you know, the reporter, the, the, uh, the it, she was a woman, you know, very beautiful, to be honest with you. Obviously, you know, she's a presenter, you know, a journalist, and we were on television. So I was keeping her so excited about the sport, you know, like this and that. And I was teaching her life on television in five minutes. Hey, I can make you, you know, become a great player, blah, blah. So that ended up in, in me being requested for a date. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's brilliant. I love it. So that, yeah, that was that was kind of funny because I was putting so much love on that, you know, that yeah. that, that ended up, you know, and I couldn't make it, you know, because at that point, you know, I was in a relationship, not anymore. I'm single now, but at that point I was in a relationship, but that was fun, you know, like when you share your energy, the big lesson in there is when you share your energy and your passion and your love, you are waking up, you know, different emotions and feelings on people, you know. I don't think I'm so handsome, you know, for for someone to come to me and say, wow, hey, you know what? What are you doing tonight? You know, like I say, what? You mean Padel? And she said, no, I mean, tonight. What are you doing tonight? I want to have a date. I said, gosh. So I think <laughs> I think I, I, think I adore that story. I, you know, basically live on television, getting proposed. Um, that is fab fabulous. Uh, Marcus, uh, just to finish, the prospects, uh, specifically, I guess, in the USA, what do you think uh, is the prospects of obviously you got the pro paddle league, you've got the clubs that are developing, the players are developing, the coaches being developed. Uh, when do you see the United States being uh, with a big flag on the, on the, on the world map of paddle? You know what? I'm receiving this question a lot and, and I don't like, you know, when people are telling me like, Hey, when the U S is going to wake up, you know, uh, in Padel or what, where the big things are going to happen in, in Padel in the U S or whatever. I said, man, that's already happening. Hmm. I, I, I need to, I need to, to put our hands up, you know, and say like, Hey, listen, we are, we are already winning, you know, like you, you cannot imagine the number of projects that are being developed, you know, currently in the US. I think we overpass what I usually call the tipping point. So we are in a second phase of the sport now where, where there's no way back, man. So the number of course are gonna be like, like uh, scaling dramatically. You know, we are experiencing already, you know, a big growth of the sport. Obviously the proper league, you know, will be keeping, you know, the, the excitement for the sport and the exposure and so on. But I also wanna, I also want to highlight, you know, different groups that are doing an amazing job in, uh, it comes to my mind, you know, like Paddle House, uh, Tactica Paddle, they are doing amazing, you know, in the West Coast, you know, with a beautiful project, Reserve, you know, and some others, you know, I I want to, I, I really want to recognize, you know, and give the credit to all the these business owners, you know, that are, you know, 
put in the courage and the bravery, you know, to start, you know, a new business in the US. And I would love to help them out, you know, all of them, you know, to become very, very successful. But this is already a reality, uh, Minter. This is what I would love to say. It's already a reality. It's not a promise. Padel in the US is not a promise. It's already a reality. You know, the institutions are working, you know, uh, venture capital like EP Capital. Um, are working really, really hard, you know, on getting, you know, a, a, a big exposure, you know, on growing the, the sport in the U.S. So I would say that it's a reality. It's not a big promise anymore. I love it. Well, I, I've already played, I think, in four or five states in America. So I'm all in. Hey, listen, Marcos, muchas gracias. It was a pleasure hearing you, listening to your energy, your passion, your devotion to the sport. Also, the great lessons you're giving us. Many, many thanks for being on The Joy of Paddle. It's been my pleasure, Minter. Thank you very much for, for your passion for the sport. Thank you very much for what you are doing, you know, spreading the word out and keeping, you know, people involved and, and growing the community because it's because of people like you that uh, we we can keep, you know, spreading the word out and the love for the sport. And, and uh, I wish you the best, man. You know that we still have, you know, one missing uh, or pending match um, that uh, yes, I don't know if we'll be playing together or in front. I don't care, but hey, who knows? You got it. We'll make that happen, Marcos. Eh? And thanks again for your support. I'll put all the links into your what you're up to, all the, the businesses you're running and such into the show notes. And I'll put some of your links to Insta and such so that people can follow you. Keep up with your doing. Keep up the great work, Marcus. Thanks again. Thank you very much, my boy. Uh, keep in touch.